This is Twit. Do you believe there's a benefit to high resolution audio? What what Neil Young is talking about, and I don't mean you know upscaling CDs to high resolution, which some people do and claim that that's high resolution, but true high resolution audio uh, captured, reproduced in high resolution. Do you, do you think there's a benefit there? Yes. Yeah, I would say so. And I think probably just that last example I gave and, you know, what I've heard in the studio is if mm -hmm. the signals, if, if the signal is not monkeyed with to any great extent, I would of course like to hear uh, more closely what they recorded at the actual event. And I have been convinced just what I've listened to in the studio in that environment that in fact, higher resolutions give you more of the there there, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but, but one thing to keep in mind is all that aside, the quality of the mastering in my mind is going to make more of a difference probably overall than resolution. I mean, if we're, if we're going to rank what makes a difference to the consumer mm -hmm. product, Mm -hmm. The mastering, the quality of the mastering, I would say, is the number one thing that, you know, well, first of all, you've got to start with the, start with a good recording, of course. Right. But let's say you've got the good recording. The second thing I think that matters most is the mastering. And the third thing I think that matters is the resolution. I mean, to a point, MP3s, I've heard them slaughter some some decent recordings, but let's we're talking about CD or better. Correct. Uh, and, That's what we're talking so, about. So I, I would say the mastering is number one, the resolution number two, and then format PS, PCM versus DSD probably number three in terms of its uh, influence or impact on the sound of the final product. Mm -hmm. Charlie X in the chat room is wondering if, well, 192 kilohertz 24-bit is really necessary. You know, it's is there a, is there a point beyond, with, beyond which it really doesn't make any difference? Um, I'm going to hesitate to say I'm going to hedge on that one only because uh, I think once again, and under certain circumstances, under controlled conditions where I've been, you know, I've played with those things, I've definitely perceived a difference. I've heard people tell me, oh, it's night and day. I, I haven't heard the night and day thing, but I have heard the, the subtle difference um, under certain environments. I've got a lot of HD recordings that are both 2496 and 24192. Here's the tough thing is I don't know whether the 2496 was downsampled from the 24192, so that's what I'm hearing, you know, because mm. you clearly proved you proved in your test that those listeners in that room could perceive the difference between a downsampled, upsampled file and an, and an untouched file. So maybe that downsampling process is why I think the 192 sounds better. So I'm going to hedge a little on that one because the – the provenance on on a lot of these HD recordings, uh, I hope actually that's one of the challenges I hope the industry solves because I would love to get an HD file and in black and white, simple to understand terms, it told me exactly what iterations it went through, what resolutions and how it got to what it is. And then then the kind of questions you're asking about the difference, we can try to rationalize, you know, in a way, very rational way, start determining what general listeners like perceive and don't perceive. Um, there was always going to be those golden ear listeners who are going to say, yes, absolutely. I hear the difference. I want it. I can't live without it. Um, you know, there's the bell curve. And so all those yeah. guys in the middle, they may be ambivalent. We may learn that they are ambivalent. And then the people at the bottom don't care if it's MP3 or not. So we, we get this bell curve. You right. know, so that's, that's likely how it's going to turn out. Now, what do we do with that? That's all marketing and business, I suppose.